into the details here. I've got you a handout. I've sent you a handout on what we're going to work on today. So what we're going to do today is really uh, finish out this last hour and figure out how to do this 406 method in some small, simple, practical examples, the kind of thing that maybe I could test you on at the end of the semester. So we'll practice this a little bit. And you just realize once you've got this method figured out that really what the commercial software is doing is just automating everything that you're going to do today. So you take everything you're doing today, you multiply it by like a thousand different activities, write some computer software to jam through all this and do it really quickly for you, and that's essentially what the commercial product is doing for you. So let's talk about how we came to this analysis. So the first step in this analysis, we've already gone through this in the prior hour. We talked about capacity and its definitions and some of the major methods out there to judge and evaluate capacity. And now we're going to look at how we got to the UIC 406. And we start with this idea of a standard timetable path. So a few years ago, I didn't put a date on this because I forgot to look up exactly the history of this. But I guess you go back 20 or 30 years, and you have this thing called the standard timetable path. And it presumes that there's some kind of a standard train that's running on your network, and everything is going to be judged according to that standard train. This might make sense you know, in a traditional environment where, say, you have inner city trains running on a regular schedule, and they're all kind of the same stock, and they're all kind of behaving the same way. It certainly would make sense in North America where a large majority of the trains are general freight trains running at a specific timing and specific schedule. But you take this st standard path and you create a string line diagram and you take a big bold marker and you kind of sketch in this image of a standard path. So here we have, we have a string line diagram and I have done it this time with geography going on the horizontal and time on the vertical. And these are standard paths. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six standard paths. These are kind of standard train occupations for a standard train path right there. So I could have hypothetically six trains if they all just followed the same path. And, but here's reality. So in reality, I've got a standard train and a faster, uh, you know, slower train. This is a slower train. I, when I switch 90 degrees, I have to reevaluate my how I visualize the pictures. So this is a slower train because it's taking longer to get over this geography, and also another slower train to get over this geography here. And so we would then measure the capacity consumption by by counting how many standard paths have been consumed by these real train paths. So I have a real train path here that is consuming one, two standard paths, because two of the standard paths are now conflicted by this real path, so they are, they are consumed. This standard path is not used, so it's open. And then I have another train down here, and it is consuming one, two standard paths. And I skipped this one. Here's one, one standard path and one train identically using that path. So you total that all up. There's the, un, there's the unused path. And so we have a capacity consumption of 84%. This is the standard train path method. Create these standard track occupation paths. Graphically, look at the train paths you really want to run. See which ones they consume. Count it up and do the math. And then that is what's left over. And then you do the consumption over the total, and you get your utilization. So this is, uh, has been used in the past and it had a great application. Uh, it's simple. It's real easy to explain. It's real easy in terms of if you've got the great big paper string line that you spend all your time drawing out, you can kind of just overlay the standard paths using a transparency or another piece of paper or something and just literally just do this manual math and count them up. But the disadvantage is, uh, as we'll see here in the next slide, that the problem is there might be two different interpretations to this that which set of assumptions you use before you start doing the calculation determines the answer you get. And so, for example, let's suppose that, you know, we went back to this other slide and uh, we said, uh, oh, five of six occupied, okay, mm, all right, but, you know, golly, how come these don't all match? You know, let's, let's, let's pick a path, a standard path that is more closely matched to the more frequent services we're running. 
So let's do that. So we're going to have these standard paths that are sharper like this. All right. And uh, now we overlay that train path. And so now we've got one not used, two not used. And now suddenly we have a 66% utilization. And so the problem now becomes, well, which one of those was the correct interpretation? And it sounds like, OK, well, let's pick this one because it gives us a better number. I like that number. Let's go. That's a great one. I like that. Let's use that one. But if you came back to this diagram tomorrow, and for whatever reason, the traffic changed, and you were now going to run, instead of two slow trains and one fast train, you flip it. And tomorrow, you're going to run two fast trains and one slow train. You will discover that suddenly the numbers reverse, and now you're all goofed up again. And now the, 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 the combinatorial utilization of the line doesn't match. So it's constantly changing because the interpretation of what is the correct answer is influenced by what did I start out with as the originating discussion. So as, a dis as an exercise here, let's practice this a little bit. We take a, a 10 minute uh, exercise break. And here is some data. You've got the handout. I've given you the handout. Do this. Do a standard path analysis for this data, for these trains, and see what it gets you. See what kind of answer you get. And it's up to you to decide what the standard path is. You have to just pick one. And I actually do want to see different answers. I actually would like to see different groups in the class choose different assumptions about the standard path, because it would be interesting to see what your answers come out to be if you choose different. So please don't try to match each other's answers. Purposely try to choose a different standard path and see what happens when you make that assumption. And then we'll uh, take a look at what, what answers you've got. So go ahead, take a few moments, uh, 10 minutes or so, and let's work this example. 